Lizette Figueroa with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. I just met with a group of young adults, all blood cancer survivors. While each of these survivors' stories are different, they all share a common bond, their experience with the treatment and survivorship challenges that follow a blood cancer diagnosis. Several of them share their concerns and the struggles they faced as they transitioned from a patient to a survivor. We sat down with Amy Jacobson, a nurse practitioner at the UCLA Live Strong Survivorship Center of Excellence at the UCLA Medical Center. Amy was able to provide some insight and helpful tips for handling their survivorship challenges that many young adults experience. Yeah, end of treatment, you're like, what now? Yeah. Well, that's when you realize what you just did. Yeah. At least for me. That's yeah, and all your like, emotions start flooding yeah. in and you don't know. You're like, I didn't cry until I got yeah, remission. I, I didn't cry when I got diagnosed. Yes. I didn't. Neither no. did I. Neither did I. I was just, I got this. I'm yeah. going to beat this. Yes. And then as soon as I was done with treatment, I was like, oh my God, I almost died. I once had a survivor put it, I think, in a really good way that well, during treatment, you're a warrior going through a war, but then the war ends and you still feel like a warrior, but there's no more war to fight. And all of a sudden you're able to let down your guard and everything kind of comes flooding out. So, and then everybody's telling you, aren't you glad this is over? You can go back to your regular life. You don't have to worry about this anymore. So I think good, if you can find a good survivorship support group or if there's survivor groups online, because other survivors are gonna understand how you're feeling. And um, sometimes people in active treatment, they're so, they're, they're like, yo, I can't believe you're saying one thing about this is you must be so happy, I can't wait to get to your point. So I think staying, trying to stay close with other survivors is really important uh, support system. Because there's also this expectation that you're supposed to just jump back into your life mm -mm. and that's not really <laughs> realistic. Mm -mm. I mean, essentially your life, not to say that it stops, but it's extremely different and you're not quite sure what it's going to look like on the other end. So it's very difficult to plan or to do certain things. And when I was done, it was kind of like, okay, I have to readjust and kind of go back into, like you said, the normal. And what, what does that mean for me? Because it doesn't mean the same thing that it meant for me before I got diagnosed. I would say Take it slow because you have a long time for the rest of your life to do this. Some people want to rush right back in. They want to get right back to where they were. And it's hard because you're going to be a different person. You might feel more mature than some of the people your age because you've gone through something that they haven't and they don't quite have the grasp of what you've gone through. So I would recommend taking it slow and being patient with people if you can <laughs> and keeping a good balance of your friends that you know, stuck with you through treatment and also with other cancer survivors in your life because I think it's important to have a balance of both. And we've had so many different discussions about, um, uh, about the process that we've all went through and how it has impacted us and, and, and all the, 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 the little nuances of things that we've experienced. You know, and those are, are, are the things that have really helped us along and, 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 and been the, the main focus of a support group like what we have. Because it makes you feel like you're not alone. Absolutely. You're not going through it alone. Because your family member, your support group is are there, but they're not going through it like you. They want to fix it. Or yeah. They, they want to fix it or they want to not judge it, but they want to analyze they the They want to make you better. When I tell you yeah. something, mm -hmm. you're just, yeah, you're just listening. There's um, a group of us that, that regularly meet that that um, really help us to provide that that support group of of peers uh, um, who are also survivors, and then I'm just getting uh, to that point now um, uh, where I am accepting that I'm a survivor now. And but I think uh, all those characteristics that that I gained throughout the treatment process will stick with me. Staying with people sick are a big thing. Um, I haven't sh uh, shook hands with my doctor since the first day. He said, I'll, I will shake hands with you again on the last day when we're going over your, your uh, uh, final clear results. I actually literally had to tell people, I'm sorry, don't give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Do you, because if I notice that they have a sniffle or, or they're a little hoarse, I'm like, I don't know what you have. Mm -hmm and I don't want to catch it. Don't take offense to it, but my life depends on it. 
So our mindset's like this, but our family members program themselves like this too. So I'm noticing that my parents are still in that defense mode. We're survivors, but our parents are also survivors. Like, yeah. how, is there Very like true. some un, like help for them to get out of that mentality? That's a tough one because your parents love you so much and they saw you go through something for them that was probably the worst thing that they could have ever imagined happening and they don't want it to happen again. So I think they're thinking they will do everything they possibly can to keep it from ever happening again, even though there was nothing that anyone could have done in the first place to keep it from happening. But just uh, be patient with them. Know that it's coming from a place of love. If there is a parent support group, they might find that helpful, but really in time it will, Everything in time, I believe, I've seen it with our long-term survivors. It starts to fade, things start to get a little easier. But just remember from your parents, it's really coming from a place of love. So I've heard about the survivorship clinic. Um, what does that entail? When do we go? Well, the first thing I'd recommend is asking your oncologist if your program has a long-term follow-up clinic or a survivorship clinic that you'll transition to. And if they say yes, you can ask them, what do you think is my estimated transition from your office to moving into survivorship care? Some oncologists say one year after treatment, some say two, some say five. It just depends on the particular, you know, on the particular um, program. I know you mentioned that there's a plan, but mm -hmm. what does the, the, the survivorship plan actually entail? In our center, what we really emphasize is that you get a treatment summary and survivorship care plan from your doctor and they may be able to put it online for you, but we recommend a printed document that outlines the treatment you got, when you got it, any complications you received, because then you have evidence of what you went through, because we'd like to think that our doctors will follow us forever, that we'll live in the same place forever, but things change, insurance companies change, doctors retire, and you'll always have a record of your treatment, and then that will help guide you as you're moving forward into survivorship of what we call late effects, which are the late effects of treatment that aren't necessarily happening now, they aren't necessarily ever gonna happen, but if they do, you are prepared and you can get screening all along to make sure that if they start, you catch them early. One thing I have difficulty with is um, since being diagnosed with ALL, um, I go to, to my oncologist for pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. Once you're done with treatment, like, what do I go to a primary doctor for and what do I go to my oncologist for? So you should establish care with a good internist. This plan will help them more than you can imagine. You may be the only leukemia survivor in their practice, but if they know how to take care of you, they will. They want to. They um, will listen to you. They'll make sure that you get the tests that are recommended. And so having a good internist and making sure that the plan talks about who will do what kind of testing so you're not left in the lurch, that, um, you know, like, who's supposed to be ordering my echocardiogram? If it says clearly the oncologist will do it or the internist will do it, then you're not left trying to figure out what doctor am I supposed to see this month? That's what the best thing about this plan is. Because if eventually your oncologist visits will believe it or not, get down to once a year, as hard as that may be to believe. Does the plan also include um, uh, other steps that, that the patient should take, either uh, dietary steps or, or, uh, or, um, or exercise or anything like that? So as far as exercise, there are national guidelines that recommend doing 30, more, 30 or more minutes per day of physical activity, five or more days of the week, and that can come in lots of forms, whatever form of exercise you enjoy. And, we, and I always recommend starting slow. Um, don't exhaust yourself right off the bat. Don't think you have to go to boot camp classes. Don't think you have to do CrossFit right away. Just do what you enjoy. Walk your dog, walk with your sister or your friend. Um, just movement. Your body is going to appreciate the movement in whatever form it comes in. And as far as dietary recommendations, there are so many, I mean, I'm sure you've all heard of every kind of diet there is. There's paleo, there's gluten-free, there's drink green juice, there's don't drink coffee, drink coffee. Personally, I believe in a whole foods diet, healthy foods that you recognize, non-processed foods, and um, eating what makes you feel good. So since I've completed uh, my treatment only two and a half weeks ago, what are the kind of questions um, that, that you see from, from patients 
like myself that are just at this at this stage. You're a little bit farther out. What kind of yeah, questions arose I'm for a, you? I'm a year out. When can I have a glass of wine? Mm -hmm. When can I eat sushi? When can I go on a cruise? Um, when can I start exercising? So it's like those questions, everything that you were told that we couldn't do anymore, little by little, you can start asking. And, yeah. and it's important to keep asking um, and maybe make a list of things because it might pop up in between visits and keep a list with you in your wallet and just write down, my next doctor's visit, I want to ask this so that you don't leave the visit going, oh, I was supposed to, I wanted to ask about that. And providers actually really appreciate it because we think we are answering the questions that you want, which are in our head, but they're probably not the questions that you want answered, so. Yeah, you know, writing them down for us is important because of our chemo brain. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Being a year out of treatment, um, I still notice I have chemo brain. Mm -hmm. um, I get scan anxiety still. Mm -hmm. um, as the years go by, does that start to minimize or is it something that we're just going to be dealing for the rest of our life? No, it's going, it is definitely going to get better with time. I've seen it in our own, in the patients that I see in my clinic. You're dealing with a lot right now, even a year out from treatment and only two weeks out from treatment. There's a lot of factors that go into chemo brain. There's fatigue, there's stress, there's um, the actual effect of the chemotherapy and all that will start to lift. And so be patient with yourself and don't be hard on yourself thinking, oh, it's a year out. I should be right back to where I was. As long as you were being treated, which was probably a three-year process, give yourself at least that time to recover.